I always say, but I'm like, Shoponi's a fat shit. He is just flamboyant and out there and everything yeah. like I always wanted to be. Hi, I'm Chelsea Frisbee with Now This and uh, I'm here with Show Pony and he is gonna make my absolute dreams come true and put me in drag today. Stick around. So tell me about the first time that you got in drag. Actually, it was mostly like go out. I went out in drag a couple times and by that, I mean, I threw like a little bit of like eyeliner on. It was very sketchy. I did some flesh tones. It was a lot easier for me only because like my skin wasn't destroyed from going through a second puberty. It was about five years ago and I started going out in drag and just like turning these looks. It was kind of scary at first. I was <laughs> terrified. My original drag mother, Evangeline, did give me my first gig and from there, I just never stopped. Do you remember like the first song that you performed to or? Yes. <laughs> it was for like a little house party and I performed Get It Up by Mindless Self-Indulgence. It's basically the entire song is him just trying to like get an erection. And oh. the act was, I got so frustrated that I couldn't get it up that I just castrate myself. And I had a packer, I had everything, I like rigged it oh up. Oh my God. With like a little blood spout and everything. And people there thought I actually castrated myself because that's how drunk they were. Oh my God. So your shows are very like, you lean into like the ooky spooky, like gory type stuff. I love being a spooky bitch. Like, yeah. That's been like my core. Like I've always done like, things that leaned more horror. So like why drag specifically for you? I honestly always wanted to explore like performance sides of everything. Mm -hmm. I I always felt it was in me. I was very, very nervous. I was very introverted as a kid yeah. growing up. Um, hmm. And when I started going out to shows, I was like, I kinda wanna do this. I'd only seen Drag Race up until that point. So I was yeah. like, okay, I don't know if I can do this or if I'm allowed. And then yeah. I started seeing Drag Kings and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Yeah. And I was just really interested in it. And then the second I performed, I was like, oh my God, I need to do this. Can you talk about like how you came to your like current aesthetic? Cause it's, I mean, it's so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. I, I always did like a lot of like Drag Kings and like performers who were doing this really like artsy makeup. I was like, they can do these like beautiful artistic faces and I love drawing of all this. So I was like, let me just combine my own artwork on my face. Oh, I love that. I always say, but I'm like, Shopony is a he is just flamboyant and out there and everything yeah. like I always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And I love giving a different side of masculinity because a lot of drag yeah. kings are very masculine. But I wanted to give like a sort of like, like some guys are allowed to be and I want yeah. that. Can you define for those who may not know, like what that means? Like what does it mean to be I mean, it's kind of your own definition at the end of the day too. Exactly. It's like another way of being like you're gorgeous, you're pretty yeah. and like, you know, it's like the whole thing, like feeling your oats, like you're feeling yourself. Yeah. Do your parents come to your shows or? Oh my God, yeah. My mom, once she realized what drag was and that mm -hmm. it wasn't me just taking my clothes off, even though I do do that, Yeah. much to her dismay. Um, <laughs> when she realized it, it was like equating it to performing, she's like, oh, mm -hmm. this is, oh my God. And now she critiques me and it feels great. My dad is a classically uh, Latin man. So mm -hmm. he's like, I just don't get it. And then he came to a couple shows at first unannounced, which scared the hell out of me. Mm -mm. But he was like, oh, you're really good. And then now he comes to shows, he has a great time. I'm very happy that like they came around, um, especially my dad. I did not um, expect that from mm. him. No, it's hard, especially with parents. My dad is very, we're trying to get him to come around to a lot of stuff, you know? Mm. And it's just like, okay, they, he had to like get over like the gay thing with my brother. And then yeah. it was, okay, I'm also like non-binary, you know? He's getting a lot better, you know? It's just like, It's, it's yeah. a process. And that's something that people don't understand. Like yeah. it is a process process and of course you can be as frustrated as you want. When I started transitioning, it's a transition for everybody mm -hmm. and that was a hard thing to sort of understand where I was like, you know what, I, at the end of the day I had to take a step back and be like, you know what, they're not kicking me out mm -hmm. and they said they want to learn about it. Yes, I am very frustrated answering the same question every single day. Mm -hmm. There was a lot, it was a struggle at first, but at the end I'm very happy that I did have that patience with them to just kind of handhold them through something that I had years to experience and like learn about. This is brand new for them. Mm, like that's a really good point, yeah. yeah. What do you think makes a good ally? Knowing when to shut the hell up, mm, um, mm. not speaking over others, and just listening. Yeah. Some people just need to listen and chill out and be like, okay, well, what do you need? Instead of just being like, isn't this f I have yeah. people who are very nice to me and I do understand it's coming from a place of love, but I don't want to be spammed with 50 things a day about, did you see this? This is so f***ed up. I'm like, I did. I'm living it. Thank you. And just sort of listen to me like, what can I do to support you? Can I walk you to your car? Mm -hmm. Do you need help with anything? Yeah. Like, are you okay? Like, how are you feeling? Like, a lot of people just sort of want to post something and go, but then they don't want to walk their friend to their car at the end of the night because they just want to, you know, go to another bar. If you could say something to all the lawmakers that are trying to put in these bands, what would you tell them? Oh my God, shut up. <laughs> Whatever happened to separation of church and state? Whatever yeah. happened to that? And also, 
you're talking about freedom all the time and okay what about our freedoms and everything else yeah just say you hate trans people don't try and mask it behind something else mm -hmm. about like kids or whatever i hate people who are just masking all of these things and not actually saying what it is yeah so, yeah like drag bands are actually a way to try and just like perform like a light genocide on like trans people and yeah everything else. and it's crazy because it's like i've yet to meet a drag queen that wants anything to do with children oh other, my god you Everyone's know what i like, mean I hate kids the guys of like oh we're trying to like protect children and like all well, this other stuff it's like obviously that's not it because if you look at the language of so many of these bands it's about gender it's yeah. about you know trying to make people adhere to the binary why do you think people are so afraid of gender expression and like you know varying from that binary it's changed for them because they grew up a certain way where it's like girls mm -hmm. wear dresses and like pink and boys wear pants and mm -hmm. it's like Meanwhile, in cultures all over the place, it's been there for years, but yeah. because of just, oh God, you go back years, colonization and everything else, due to like Christianity and other major religions, just trying to erase that, even though it's also been in that as well. Yeah. The Pope wears a dress, but like- The Pope wears a dress. The Pope wears a dress and, and it's heels. Yes. And little, little kitten heels. And his little yeah. Pope mobile and everything else. I'm yeah. like, ugh. The Catholic Church, like, come on, let's it's be drag. honest. It's I, so it, gay. I grew up Roman Catholic, like, <laughs> like it's drag. It is full on drag. I'd love to know like how, you know, your identity as a trans man and like your drag, like how that like happened and like how it intersects. Drag really did help me discover my identity. Oh, I love that. Um, it really helped me to sort of like, before I even started drag and like going to shows, I knew that something was different. And it was confusing to me because a lot of trans stories are like, I knew since I was a little girl that I mm -hmm. was a boy and like vice versa. And for me, that wasn't the case. I loved wearing dresses. I loved wearing heels. I loved mm -hmm. makeup and you know, everything else. I was just so scared of accepting that because again, yeah. the only examples that I ever had was that we were the butt of the joke or we were mm -hmm. being killed or vice versa. So drag sort of helped me explore that with a mask on and helped me sort of be like, oh, this isn't me, this is show pony. And then I was like, oh, fuck, it's me. And it really helped me sort of accept a lot of things that were hard to accept. But it helped me, you know, embrace the feminine side of myself and realize, oh, I can be a feminine man. That's mm -hmm. totally okay. And it's actually really fun. How long does it typically take you to get into drag? Uh, it depends. Um, I disassociated in my Red Bull phase today, so okay. it took me an hour and a half. Okay. Um, but if I'm doing something like really crazy, it can take anywhere, sometimes like three hours. If I'm Oh my god, insane. I love that. What's the most painful part of drag? The heels. The heels. Yeah. yeah. Even though I do, I'm awful to myself. I keep them on to the end of the time. Like, I wore heels here today. I wore walking heels here today. I could have worn walking heels. And like <laughs> that, and I'm like squeaking along with my chunky boot. What do you think the most cliche thing about drag is? Feeling like you have to be an activist for everything. Oh, interesting, okay. I love when drag performers are political. I love when yeah. they make statements. I like, I do it myself. But where it's like, everything I do is a statement. Look at me, I'm so, I'm a martyr, I'm a pariah. And it's like, yeah. okay, let's, let's calm down. Remember, you are in a wig. Do you think that that puts like a lot of pressure on drag artists to like always be yes. like talking about it? Especially because it, it feels like drag is such a queer celebration and like point of joy for people. At the end of the day, like drag is fun. Yes, I will use my platform to stand up for people. I will mm -hmm. use my platform to use my voice where it is needed. But I'm also like, I think it puts pressure on drag performers to constantly be perfect and constantly have to make a statement with something. Not everybody has to be an activist. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't have to be on every trans person to have to stand up for themselves. And you know what? Sometimes not everyone should. Because yeah. then we get, well, when people died at Stonewall. Yeah. <laughs> no one died at Stonewall. No one died at Stonewall. No one, I need everyone to know, no, no one, one died at Stonewall. Stonewall. What misconceptions do you think there is about drag? That drag queens are the only thing. Um, okay. Now, I, I do like drag kings coming more into the light, but um, I hate this conception that drag kings are bad. Like bad at performing, you mean? Bad at performing, mm. bad at everything. That it's not as hard because they don't ha we don't have to pad, we don't have to, you know, do other things. But I'm like, okay, I see drag kings doing incredible things. When did you start to feel like really, really confident in your makeup? Honestly, when I started seeing people imitating me. I think it's very flattering whenever I see people like imitating my face and just sort of like, doing their own versions of it. Why the white face? I used to do flesh tones and I just didn't feel like myself. And mm -hmm. it also leaves, it's kind of like a blank canvas for me. Yeah. I look at it really as like a sketchbook where I can do whatever I want and it looks really cool. Maybe scaring people in the cars as they go by. Hell yeah. Especially because I have such like a normal outfit too. Like I feel like you, like it's like, yeah, okay. And then it's like me, it's like, hi, business professional here. Uh, gonna talk to you about, you know, your taxes. <laughs> so heels or flats? 
Oh God, heels. Drag brunch or bachelorette party? Drag brunch. Bachelorette's that bad? Look, they're very fun. I love it, but uh, girls, please stop screaming over us when we're just trying to talk. Group number or solo? Ooh. Can I switch that out for a group roulette? Oh, what is that? So a drag roulette is where you go around the audience and you ask people for like, give me a doll and you can request a song. Oh. And we'll all take turns doing 30 seconds of like a song or two a minute and it's yeah. so fun. Oh, that's so fun. It's my favorite thing in the world. I... <laughs> I'm so happy. So how did you get your drag name? Um, I grew up an emo kid and I don't know if anybody else here is obsessed with My Chemical Romance, but um, there was a music video called Na 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 and one of my best friends at the time, um, she was like, well, what about the name Show Pony? Because there's a character in the music video who is on rollerblades, has a polka dot helmet, a crop top, and like tight, tight pants and a thong. And I was like, oh, bitch, that's me. Do you feel like drag kings are like finally getting their time? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, I feel like we've so, been on the up and up yeah. for like a while. Until there's a king on Drag Race though, and they book more than one drag mm -hmm. king on like major shows. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we're getting there. We're starting to get recognized finally. Oh. I love it. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. This has been the best day of my life. I've peaked. Nothing will ever get better from here. Thank you so much. Thank you, you. you killed it. it so I fun. follow Show Pony at. You can follow me on Instagram at Show Pony. That's S H O W P O N I I. And if you want to see me screaming on Twitter, that's at Pony Boy, which is P O N I I B O I. Some quirky.